I want to let you know that I have a Patreon again, and offers the largest number of benefits, I think, for any Nat History channel. If you can afford it, there's a link in the description, the comment section, and at the end of this video. Thanks a bunch. This year has easily been the worst year on record. From the start, it's been chock full of tragedy, natural disaster, and political catastrophes, the likes of which are only topped by whatever comes next month. I'm sure you've seen the memes, but in case y'all needed a refresher, Australian fires reduced an England-sized area to ash, resulting in deaths of 30 people and thousands of animals. The US was almost pushed to the brink of active war with Iran, which went radio silent after Iran shot down one of its own planes. And legendary NBA star Kobe Bryant died in a helicopter crash. Swarms of locusts descended upon East Africa, worse than usual, due to climate change exacerbating heavy rainfall and cyclones, resulting in really good conditions for breeding. A dozen magnitude 3 earthquakes were recorded in Yellowstone in the span of 24 hours. Of course, the corona apocalypse hit and has yet to be eliminated, currently 7 million cases and 400,000 deaths worldwide. Protests and riots sparked by the death of George Floyd and the historical mistreatment of people of color by the police overall are still ongoing. Among all of this, certain rather cursed events have also occurred regarding the health of our ecosystems. One of the scariest if you're an entomophobe, I'm talking to you, David, has to be the case of the murder hornets. Sorry to dredge up the events of the past six months, but come on, you can't escape it. We need to confront it all the time or else we lose sight of what's going on. Or else we'd end up like the dumb, dumb smooth brains thinking we can just go back to the way it was before by ignoring the literal pandemic going on right now. So, what are murder hornets? Murder hornets are usually called the Asian giant hornet. Known to science as Vespa, Mandarinia, the Asian giant hornet, also sometimes called the Japanese giant hornet, is, as its many names suggests, the largest hornet alive today. To put this into perspective, let's take out a ruler. Line it up with your thumb. If you're of reasonably average size, the Asian giant hornet should be as long as your entire thumb at two full-ass inches. I don't know about you, but when I think about two inches, I don't immediately think, oh yeah, that's a big one. For an insect, two inches is very large. And for a rapid flying hyperactive insect, two inches is incredibly large. The largest living bee, Wallace's giant bee, only reaches as much as one and a half inches in females. So it doesn't totally hold up the same kind of candle to our very scary, aggressive friend here. Now, like certain human body parts, it's not the length, but how it's used that's important. The same idiosyncratic metaphor can be applied to the Asian giant hornet. When it comes to the Asian giant hornet, it's both the length and how it's used that should scare you. The stinger of the Asian giant hornet measures at about 6 millimeters, or 0.25 inches long. That's about 4 millimeters, or 0.18 inches longer than the stinger of a honeybee, and about as long as a medium-sized rose thorn but of course hypodermic and super thin. This butt needle allows the flying jalapeno to sting the shit out of prey and predators with an especially potent venom. Here's where I get bogged down in biochemistry, so if you're here just because DINOS ARE COOL, now's your time to exit the vehicle. The venom within the ass end of the Asian giant hornet contains what is called a cytolytic peptide. If you're wondering what a peptide is, <laughs> so am I. It's actually a bunch of amino acids linked together into a more complex structure. The cytolytic peptide within the venom of the Asian giant hornet belongs to the group called mastoporan, which is always present in most wasp venoms. Now we get to the gruesome part. The venom of these roid rage sky daggers damages tissue by stimulating phospholipase action. This venom also contains a neurotoxin called mandarotoxin. When it comes to chemical compounds, the dose makes the poison. A single Asian giant hornet cannot physically inject enough venom to seriously harm or kill a person. But when they gang up on enemies, 
their unusually potent venom can quickly become a very serious problem. The extreme pain resulting from a sting by one of these gals is due both to how nasty the venom is and how much of it a single hornet is able to inject. Yeah, you heard that right. A single hornet cannot inject enough to kill, but it does inject way too much. Dr. Masato Ono of the Tamagawa University recounted the sting as like a hot nail being driven into my leg. Okay. In 2013 alone, 41 people died and 1,600 injured in Shanxi, China due to stings from Asian giant hornets. The yearly fatalities to these spicy gals are kind of in question. Since 2001, the yearly human fatalities to insect stings has ranged from 12 to 26, but this tally lumps all wasp, bee, and hornet sting deaths together, so the exact yearly death toll for the Asian giant hornet is probably below the range. Nevertheless, 2013 was obviously a pretty bad year for humans unlucky enough to live near these flying hypodermic needles. This is why they were given the name Satsujin Susumibashi by Japanese news outlets. Uh, by the way, Satsujin Susumibachi literally translates to murder hornet, so you can thank the Japanese for that name. Seems like something Americans would come up with. If you aren't allergic, the sting is as painful as I've laid out. If you are allergic, it quickly becomes as deadly as 41 people dead sounds. Fatalities from envenomation are due primarily to anaphylactic shock or cardiac arrest. After a large number of stings, multiple organ failure can also occur. The big question is why? 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 Why do these hornets have such dangerous venom? As far as my research has got me, there's no reason. I can't find any studies which sought after the origin of the Asian giant hornet's unnecessarily overkill weaponry. Since there's a biological and chemical arms race between predators which use venom and their prey species, I want to say something similar is going on with these hornets. Something in the genome of the predator mutates and allows it to secrete slightly nasty venom. This venom kills the prey item faster than without the venom. Over time, this venom becomes increasingly dangerous. On the other side is the prey item. Over time, generations become increasingly immune to the effects of the predator's venom. This back and forth evolutionary tit for tat results in a predator with increasingly dangerous venom. And thus we have the black mamba, which can kill animals so much bigger than it that it wouldn't even know where to begin digesting it. These venom mechanisms can then retroactively be utilized as a defense. Some snakes have this kind of venom to kill their prey quickly, while others have it as a natural defense against predators, and sometimes both of these are the case. Those predators using their venom primarily for defense usually tend to have bright contrasting colors and patterns as a signal to other animals of how deadly its venom is. Some predators which still use their venom primarily for predation retain their camouflaging patterns. My ape brain wants to point the finger at this snaky evolutionary mechanism and say it's what's going on with the wasps. But the Asian giant hornets eat anything. There seems to be no primary prey item that would complete the general dichotomous biological arms race. As a eusocial hornet, the Asian giant hornet has casts of female workers, the giant two-inch queen, and the rare males. Not only are they bigger and more well-equipped than most other insects in their general vicinity, they're also some of the meanest and most voracious predators. Though their main food source is honeybees, they target anything and will eviscerate insects larger than them. During this time of year, as well as in the fall, Asian giant hornets favor large mantises. Mantids are usually on the tippy top of the predator hierarchy in the world of the insect. They're extremely fast, efficient predators, some of which are big enough to take down small birds and bats. Unfortunately for mantises, Asian giant hornets are running wolf software on wasp hardware. Their favorite killing method is decapitation. If such an intricate maneuver is impossible, they'll use their enormous shearing mandibles to sever the prey in two. The Asian giant hornet, you guessed it, is native to Asia, with sizable species located in China, Russia, Myanmar, and Japan. It's here they attempt to totally eradicate the Japanese honeybees. A handful of Asian giant hornets are capable of exterminating a colony of tens of thousands of honeybees in a single massacre. Crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and they hear the lamentation of their women. Here's how they do it. A single scout worker hornet will come across a beehive. This gal will cautiously approach the hive. They are rather conspicuous and of course plus-sized. 
so they don't want to set off the honeybee's defenses. The scout then releases a nasty-smelling funk only other hornets will understand, a signaling pheromone which marks the honeybee colony for death. This signal leads the hornet's nestmates to the honeybee hive to begin the assault. A single Asian giant hornet can kill as many as 40 honeybees per minute, simply because of how big and overpowered the hornet is. Since the hornet is five times the size of the bee and heavily armored, the honeybee's sting is effectively useless. The worker honeybees are not the hornet's main target. Sure, they offer a little pick-me-up of protein, but it's the dummy thick babies they're after. They steal the honeybees' babies and feed them to their own developing young. I killed them all. They're dead. Every single one of them. And not just the men, but the women. And the children, too. They're like animals. And I slaughtered them like animals. As the hornets can travel up to 60 miles or 100 kilometers a day, and at a sustained speed of 25 miles or 45 kilometers an hour, they dominate nearly every ecosystem they can wiggle their way into, which, if we're not careful, might now include North America. Back in 2019, North America had the first rumblings of something that could easily become pretty bad. The Asian giant hornet has been found five times in the Vancouver area. September of last year saw a report of the Asian giant hornet in two places in British Columbia. Reports have now filed in from south of the US-Canada border, of Asian giant hornets in the US, which is the first time they've ever made it over here. December 2019 saw two reports of individuals near Blaine, Washington, and May saw another report. The May report was made of an individual Asian giant hornet in Langley, British Columbia, and Whatcom County near Custer, Washington. The specimen was dead when the report was made, and the individual was a queen. With the queen dead, the workers probably didn't survive long. What this might mean is a nest survived the winter from the first reports late last year to this summer. If they did survive the winter, it is possible that nest produced viable breeding queens. This is a big problem. The most recent report was made in June 2020. This new specimen was collected from Bellingham, 15 miles from the last report. Are they spreading? Thankfully, the person who found the hornet stepped on it. Since these reports, the USDA has begun working tirelessly to create traps and to figure out how far this is going. They are potentially dangerous to people, yeah, but they offer a more sinister threat to us Americans' well-being. You see, the Asian giant hornet's usual prey, the Japanese honeybee, has been living under the tyranny of the hornets for a very long time. Both are native to Japan and have been for probably thousands of years. Japanese honeybees have developed a survival mechanism to deal with the sky piranhas. Remember the weird funk the hornet scout leaves as a death sentence for the honeybee hive? The Japanese honeybees have lived long enough with it to understand what it means. Once the workers of a given hive pick up the hornet's smell, they begin to set a trap. They set a trap. They actually set a trap. A hundred or so workers make a move for the entrance to their hive and wait. They make sure the entrance is open so the hornet scout can enter. Once the bastard enters, all hundred or so bees dogpile the hornet. They form a ball around the hornet and restrict the jalapeno popper from doing anything. It's at this point the bees enact their secret weapon. They vibrate. The Japanese honeybees violently vibrate their powerful flight muscles. This has been co-opted from what they usually use their vibrations for. They vibrate their flight muscles during the winter to keep their hive nice and warm. As they vibrate around the hornet, the air temperature raises to 115 degrees Fahrenheit, 46 degrees Celsius. Since the bees are huffing and puffing to do this, they're breathing out a tremendous amount of CO2. The Japanese honeybee can survive up to 112 degrees and a large percentage of CO2, but the hornet cannot. The hornet's lease on life proceeds to expire. Of course, a few bees die along the way. Tis the price of keeping the glorious bee empire alive. Oh, no, not the bees! This isn't the only way the Japanese honeybees are up to the hornet's challenge. As two eusocial colonies of insects, both biologically want to avoid killing one another outright. This would be expensive and unprofitable warfare. Sometimes, the bees will emit their own smelly funk words that offer a stark warning to the hornets of, I see you. This can ward off the hornets as they too are aware of the bees' defensive hotboxing defense. Of course, they're not actually thinking through all of this, it's all instinct. 
Unfortunately, the majority of the bees here in the US, the bees we literally rely on for food, are not the Japanese honeybee. Our European honeybees are used for agriculture to A, make honey, and B, pollinate every single plant we use. Without them, we'd probably enter a famine. Though there's always other pollinators which could help carry some of the slack or the honeybees to go bye-bye. We could also create our own drone bees to artificially pollinate our food. But that's a lot of hard work and money, and we're lazy apes. The European honeybee can't form a hotbox around the hornets, and can't defend their glorious empires against these flying tanks. We must stay vigilant. If you see what looks like an Asian giant hornet, approach with caution. If you are absolutely sure it is one, kill it or capture it and report it to state wildlife or state agro. <laughs> Beat the devil out of This is an invasive species we cannot afford to let invade. How did this happen? Unknown. Probably got here by accident in a shipment from Asia. Doesn't really matter anymore. I'd like to add that you shouldn't be killing every single wasp or hornet you see because you're scared that they are an Asian giant hornet. They are very easy to identify by how absolutely monstrously thick they are. They have a very orange head, a brown and black thorax, and an abdomen with the same color, plus some yellowish stripes. Native wasps and hornets are important predators of pests, like mosquitoes and flies. Please, don't kill them, unless they're invading your home or presenting you with a clear threat. If you like this video, sting the hell out of the like button, and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. If you want to join the guild, dogpile, and hotbox the notification bell just so you're in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching. Next level.